Welcome to This Is My Architecture. I'm Matt from AWS. Today we're in Tel Aviv, Israel, and I'm joined by Amir, who's the chief architect for Viber. Thanks for joining. Thank you for having me. So Viber, a lot of users probably use Viber, but uh, for those who might not, tell us about the company. Sure. Viber is a communications platform for instant messaging and audio and video calls, and we have over a billion users worldwide. Wow, so a billion users, you're going to be operating at massive scale. And so today we're going to be talking about data lakes, right? So a lot of users are asking me you know, as, and my team about data lakes. Um, I think they'll find it fascinating to see how you have built a data lake that operates at huge scale. So let's talk about it. First of all, you know, what is that scale? Tell us a little bit about how many events or how much data you're, you're storing and processing on a daily basis here. Yeah, sure. Uh, so as you mentioned, we're at a massive scale. Uh, we're processing over 10 to 15 billion events per day, wow. uh, which peaks out o over 300,000 events per second. Uh, we're storing in our data lake many petabytes of data. Uh, so we have, as you mentioned, enormous scale. That's amazing. So many petabytes, you know, I think you said 300,000 events per second. This thing has to scale, and I bet we're going to enter some interesting edge conditions. Let's dig into them. So tell us about the, the life cycle of a message. You know, when you get a message, when these messages start flowing in, what happens? How are they processed? Sure. So we have our Viber backend here. Uh, we have thousands of instances on EC2. Yeah. They're sending events to uh, Kinesis, which is streaming our events. Uh, it's streaming the events to our uh, real-time data uh, processing system, they, uh, and it's also streaming them directly to S3 on Kinesis Firehose. Okay, great. So a few questions there. You know, at that scale, again, you know, hundreds of thousands of messages per second. First of all, how are you actually getting them into Kinesis, and was there anything you had to do to kind of help Kinesis handle that much of an inflow of messages at a given time? Yeah, so we're actually batching the events uh, into a single uh, Kinesis message. Okay. Uh, so we're actually, even though we're doing over 300,000 events per second, we're actually using a little bit under 100 shards. Okay. Uh, so it's uh, much more cost efficient and it's also uh, much faster. Great. Um, on the Kinesis side, we're basically uh, sending to uh, Apache Storm using the KCL. Great. Uh, it's reading the events. So that KCL is running on the cluster that Apache Storm is running on? Correct. Great, now are you using EMR for that or is that an EC2 cluster? Or? It's running directly on EC2. Great. And uh, it's taking basically each event uh, and spreading it into the different event types. We're running over 200 events on a single Kinesis stream. So the first job is basically to split them into the different events. Okay. And these events are also running in very different throughputs. We have events with uh, over 80, 90,000 per second and wow. others which are happening once a minute, let's say. Okay. So it's, uh, it has to deal with very uh, big variances uh, in event throughput. Now it's taking each event and it's validating it, making sure that the, uh, the event is properly uh, written. And if it's not, it's running into an invalid bucket. And each event, it's basically um, updating our Couchbase uh, NoSQL database, uh, which is holding a user profile. Great. So it's updating uh, almost in real time uh, each profile of a user. Uh, the second uh, use case here for real-time events is our spam uh, system, which it's running events into another Kinesis uh, stream, which is then sending the events to um, server's Lambda functions, which are processing these events. Yeah. And uh, for each event, it's basically running across uh, machine learning models that we built for spam detection. Mm -hmm. And if we detect uh, a spammer, we're basically sending an event back to our Viber backend to basically uh, block that user uh, so it's stopping to send spam within seconds that it started. That's amazing. So that's actually a really interesting real-time use case, you know, sort of spam detection and spam or stopping the spammers. I like how you're using sort of Apache Storm as a, a router and a kind of a controller in this system that, and having messages at different speeds. You know, that's going to be really interesting for a lot of people watching this. But you're, you're moving the messages in a few ways. You're moving messages, you mentioned using the KCL into Apache Storm cluster for processing and sort of routing different, uh, whether it's your real-time system or other use cases. You're also using Firehose. So just tell us a little bit more about why and how you're using Firehose to put the messages in S3. Sure, the Firehose is basically uh, getting another copy of the raw messages to S3 in case we have any issue uh, with our spam cluster. Yeah. As we're running at a very, very high scale, Anything can happen and things always happen. Of course. So we always have a sort of backup uh, to our uh, system. So we're basically um, saving the, the raw data to S3 in case there is any issue. Um, we also have in Kinesis where the, it's storing our data for up to 24 hours. Yeah. 
Uh, we actually um, uh, checked of increasing that to seven days, but it's actually more cost effective to use Kinesis Firos to S3 and leave the data even for two weeks. It's much cheaper than increasing the, uh, the time that we're storing the data into Kinesis. So that's interesting. So Kinesis Firehouse, though, is really great for getting data from you know, Kinesis into S3, but because you're using S3 as sort of your, your backup for this data, instead of increasing the retention to seven days, there's no Firehose the other way, is there? So how, how are you actually getting the data if you had to do that back into your Kinesis stream? Yeah, so unfortunately, uh, there isn't a reverse fire hose, which I'd love you guys to build. Uh, so we built our own uh, EMR uh, process, which basically takes the data from S3 and writes them back into Kinesis in Great. case we have an issue. Um, and that's basically our backup uh, scenario. Great. You know, like our CTO over in Vogel says all the time, and I like to quote him, everything fails all the time. So you have to be ready yes. for it, right? Okay, so your data is sitting here in S3. Now again, I have to ask, I'm gonna sound like a broken record, but at that kind of scale, you know, 300,000 events per second, um, you have to be careful about how you work with S3. And I know you're doing some batching, but even with batching at that scale, are you, you know, how are you distributing, how are you taking advantage or at least get, maintaining consistent throughput and performance out of S3? Yeah, so uh, basically um, we're not writing every event to a file in S3, obviously. We're okay. batching them into uh, files. Initially, we wanted to batch them into files which are at least 100 megabytes big, and we wanted to use the Parquet uh, file format, which is a columnar uh, format, which is very effective for querying later yeah. on. Uh, unfortunately, the, uh, uh, in order to batch them large enough, because we have uh, events which are uh, slower throughput than others, mm -hmm. it was uh, impossible to batch the, uh, all these events for, let's say, up to an hour sometimes in Apache Storm. You run uh, out of space? Run out of memory space, memory, yeah. yeah. So uh, basically what we had to do is that we write the events from Apache Storm to S3 in smaller files. Okay. And then we have a separate process, uh, an EMR process, which basically a Spark process, which basically on an hourly uh, basis, takes those events, aggregates them into larger files, and converts them uh, into the Parquet format. Great, okay. So that makes a lot of sense about how you're batching, how you're storing on S3, and really doing that in a smart way so you can handle it at scale, how you're using Spark with EMR to help with that sort of Parquet conversion and partitioning. Um, you have some other icons up here, though. You have uh, Athena, you have Redshift. So you know, what else is happening in this architecture? What are you using the rest of these for? Sure, so uh, we mentioned EMR before, but yeah. uh, besides basically batching the data, we also use it to aggregate data for our uh, business intelligence. Okay. So for example, we wanna calculate our uh, daily active users, monthly active users, things like that. So we would send the data uh, to EMR and, and it would basically send back the uh, results, the aggregated data back to our S3 data lake. So our S3 data lake has both the raw data and the aggregated data. And are you using Spark to do that as well? Yeah, we have both Spark. We also have still processes in Pig, Pig that great. we use, yeah. still do. <laughs> Nice. Um, the next piece, uh, Athena. Um, this is basically, we use both Athena and uh, Presto. Mm -hmm. um, Athena is a great service, which we love. Yeah. Uh, we used to use uh, Presto a lot. Mm -hmm. And now uh, any new thing and even uh, older stuff, we're moving more and more to Athena yeah. because it's running much faster and it's much easier to use. Fully than... managed. Exactly, yeah. So uh, we love that service. And it's basically taking both the raw data and the aggregated data and basically uh, uh, also calculating things uh, and sometimes running them back to S3 and other things we use the results directly into our uh, business intelligence tools um, such as Tableau and things like that. Uh, and the final icon here, Redshift, uh, which we use both Redshift and Aurora. Mm -hmm. um, we use it both for data warehousing, so we take some of the data we load from S3 directly to Redshift. And other times we use uh, Aurora, for example, to take the aggregated data. Most of the business intelligence tools sure. uh, can't work at scales of petabytes. Yeah. Uh, so we basically have to uh, uh, aggregate all of this data down, and then we put them into... Uh, uh, into tables, uh, which are used for our uh, reporting tools. Okay, so you have Aurora, you have Redshift, subsets of the data, or you know, aggregations of the data that you can then attach to Tableau or whatever BI tools you're using, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay, interesting. Well, I love how you're using a number of different data stores, whether it's Couchbase and OSQL on EC2, you know, S3 obviously is your canonical data store in this, in this uh, data lake, you know, Redshift, Athena, EMR, Kinesis, you know, you're really taking advantage of the full breadth of not only AWS native services, but our partners as well. So it's really great to see. I also like the mix of sort of real-time data processing and batch processing for the different use cases, sort of in a single architecture. Uh, it's very interesting architecture, and, and thanks for sharing it with us. Thank you for having me. And thanks for watching. This is my architecture.